Good morning. Barry Bryson here. Thank you for joining me for another five good minutes with the word. We're coming near the end of our study of the biographical uh, songs of David. In fact, um, this um, is the last biographical song in the hymn book, and we've gone nearly half the book of Psalms from the last time. We've gone from Psalm 70 to Psalm 142. So 71 out of 150 songs. I mean, we've we've gone that distance without um, encountering another one of the biographical songs. We're going to look at two more uh, songs after this one. We're going to look at the last song of David in the hymn book, and then we're going to look at Psalm 131 as kind of a summary and then we'll talk about the things that God, or that David is teaching us. God is teaching us through David's experiences in the Psalms. Psalm 142. It begins, a mass kill of David when he was in the cave, a prayer. So, um, it's a mass kill. That's the kind of song that it is. Um, and it is, it is a prayer, uh, just to let us know. Um, so this is, this is a supplication song. It's more than just a prayer. It's teaching us. <laughs> it's teaching us to pray this kind of prayer. And it is a cry for help. It's a cry for help. That's what this is. And it's teaching us how to pray that kind of a prayer, uh, very much so. When he was in the cave, when is this? Um, well, I mean, it could be lots of times. There are two different times where David encountered Saul in the cave. There was uh, David uh, hiding out in the cave of Adullam, which was kind of a headquarters for him uh, for a bit. Um, maybe this happened when he was um, fleeing from uh, Absalom later on. You know, we're not exactly sure. Um, but this happened when he was in a cave and he needed deliverance. Just seven verses. And yet so much in these seven verses. With my voice, I cry out to the Lord. With my voice, I plead for mercy to the Lord. When my spirit faints within me, you know my way. In the path where I walk, they have hidden a trap for me. Look to the right and see. There is no one who takes notice of me. No one cares for my soul. I cry to you, O Lord. I say, you are my refuge, my portion. In the land of the living, attend to my cry, for I am brought very low. Deliver me from my persecutors, for they are too strong for me. Bring me out of the prison. The righteous will surround me, for you will deal bountifully with me. Or excuse me, I, I left out a line in verse 7. Bring me out of the prison that I may give thanks to your name. The righteous will surround me, for you will deal you will deal bountifully with me. Okay. Um, David begins the psalm in verse 1 by saying, um, this is what I do. You, know, you read this song, when I feel this way, this is what I do. With my voice, I cry out to the Lord. With my voice, I plead for mercy to the Lord. And there we have Yahweh mentioned twice in that very first verse. So, it already creates a very intimate relationship between David and God, but he's not saying Elohim. Uh, remember when we looked at 63 a couple of days ago, which is a very intimate song, love song to God, he doesn't use Yahweh. He doesn't use God's name. He's, he keeps saying, he says God, Elohim, uses the formal, the formal title. And in, I, I believe lest we get the wrong impression, take the metaphor too far. But here, when he's crying for help, you know, um, he, he's, as Jesus would, cry, would, would say in the Garden of Gethsemane, Abba, you know, Dad. Um, <laughs> I know your name and you know mine. I belong to you and you belong to me. Okay, so he's saying, when I feel this way, the way that I'm expressing in the psalm, this is what I do. And what I do is I cry out to God for help. So he's saying, take it to God. You know, it's like that old hymn, Art thou weary? Art thou, uh, art thou heavy hearted? Tell it to Jesus. Tell it to Jesus. And this is, I pour out my complaint before him. I tell my trouble to him. And he says, my complaint and my trouble. And he does both. And his complaint 
um, is is um, the way he feels, you know. Um, I'm fainting inside me. You can look around and there's nobody that cares for me. Nobody cares for me. This is what I'm feeling in the moment. And this is what's happening to me. I'm brought low. Um, uh, I'm being persecuted. Uh, I feel like I'm in prison. This, 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 this cave is a prison. And so in verses 5 through 7, he's telling details about, about what's happening to him. You know, he's being, he's trapped, he's trapped, he's persecuted, um, he's trapped, he's persecuted, um, and he needs rescue. And so his complaint and his trouble is being laid out. This is the way I feel. Nobody cares about me. This is what's happening to me. I'm trapped, I'm persecuted. This is what I need you to do. I need you to rescue me right now. But that's not where it ends. Because... In just a few lines, really not even <clears throat> an entire verse, but the last half of the first couplet of the last verse, and then the last couplet of the last verse, the last three lines of the last four lines, which are verse 7. He gives his intentions. If, if you save me, this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to give thanks to your name. I'm not going to gloat. I'm not going to enjoy the spoils. I'm just going to express my gratitude. And then his confidence. The righteous will surround me. You will deal bountifully with me. That's not a demand. That's an expectation. That, that he fully believes that he's going to receive the deliverance that he is asking for. Remember James says in James chapter 1, if you ask God for wisdom, he'll give you wisdom. But when you ask for anything, don't ask with wavering faith. Don't, don't be like somebody being tossed on, a, uh, on the sea in a rudderless boat. Don't be that person. Ask expecting to receive, which is what David is actually doing. He, he's giving us um, um, a textbook in seven verses of how to pray when we need God's help, when we feel absolutely desperate, uh, and we are blessed by it. Okay, well, thank you. This is the last of the biographical psalms. We're going to look at two more psalms. Uh, we're going to look at Psalm 145 and Psalm 131. We'll pick up with Psalm 145 next time.